Hi, we are the Mix Up Chef. Uh, my name is Kenneth, and this is my wife, Laureen. We actually run this supper club called The Mix Up Chef. We call ourselves the Mixtape Chef because Mixtape is a term that's obviously related to music, and music is also something that, we, uh, that brings people together. For me, cooking was more like a creative outlet, and I found it very meaningful to bring people together through food. Compared to a restaurant, the biggest benefit is I have full creative control about what I push out. You are the chef, you are the dishwasher, you are also the admin staff. Make sure that we have everything that is purchased and also replying emails for future dinners. The Instagram posts and so that, that you know, we're having dinner, the Instagram still punches out. As a private dining, we are sort of bounded by the retail staff. So I do get my staff from all quite a few different places. Hello, Xiao Pang. I was in the copper world for about eight years and I was very jaded about the whole thing, wasn't happy and um, for me cooking was more like a sort of um, creative outlet and I found it very meaningful to bring people together through food. I am ultimately a self-taught chef. I picked up most of my fundamentals from, <laughs> from the internet and YouTube. Then after I quit my job, we went for a three and a half months small trip around the world. Whenever we travel, I try to go to cooking school to learn how to make it authentically. We're just going now to the, to the garden. Um, I have a little plot of land where I lease from the national park um, to grow my stuff. So yeah, and we're here now. Normally I don't really grow by seeds. Um, I sort of buy the sort of um, the baby plants, uh, the seedlings. We have some uh, chives here, which I harvested the last time, so it's very sparse right now. Uh, we've got some rosemary, uh, sage, and this is the crown jewel parsley, looking really good. Alright, so we are here at the local wine market to pick up some supplies. Hello, hello. Uh, I think another fuck about to pay another two man. We ordered some uh, pork from them. We got a cut of pork called the Fu Jian Tian, which is it's a cut that's hard to get in Singapore actually. Uh, so you need to come to localize and have a relationship with the with the market, where the market where they sort of can prepare and save it for you because each pig only have two pieces. Is this it? That's it. That's it. Oh, the beauty about shopping at wet market is that you can buy in non-bulk. Comparatively, if you get from supermarket, they tend to give you say a lot of stuff they can't finish. But then here you can sort of just get what you need. We do not have the economy skills compared to restaurants. We I am bounded to buy the stuff like everyone else. I get my stuff from the local supermarket, from the wet market as well. We are not at a skill where we can buy in bulk from suppliers at the trade price. So we're here to pick up some uh, dried mushrooms. So these are typically used in traditional like herbal, herbal soup and stuff. Um, and they give a very incredible depth of flavor that is similar to porcini mushrooms. Um, well, we can't really get porcini mushrooms here because we are in the tropics, but they have an incredible depth of earthy mushroom flavors that is just beautiful for, for risotto. So tonight's menu is a sort of like a koji tasting menu. It is a combination of three years of experiments on koji. So for this menu, there's a lot of uh, pre-work that needs to be done. So koji is actually a mold that is typically found in Asia. Koji is very interesting for me because it can make something simple taste so much more than what it actually is. It's the mold that we use to make soy sauce, it's the mold that we use to make sake, it's the mold that we use to make miso. I think the time and attention that we give to the menu is unparalleled compared to the restaurants. Here we have the koji spores. These are spores that was gifted to me from a friend of ours from, from Japan. So we're going to grow it on linen cloth as well as this perforated trays because it gives it maximum airflow so that it has oxygen for the little guys to grow. Okay, so this is a DIY Koji incubator with a temperature controller. I got a temperature controller, I got the refrigeration unit and, the, and routed this whole thing. Really tested my electrical engineering 101 and uh, we'll see the Koji in 48 hours. 
Here is some classic koji that's grown on rice, Japanese rice. You need an age number beef for the next dinner, which is in about 3 days time, so you need to age it now. So you're going to make some koji powder with some of the fresh koji that was made yesterday. This is our shakaturi chamber. So we actually grow, we are actually experimenting with shakaturi right now. We're actually growing koji on the, this is a pancetta, but with koji grown on top of it. So here we have the aged meats with koji. So we've been aging this for about two days now in the fridge. So now what we're going to do is we're going to remove most of the koji on the surface because koji is actually very sweet. If you leave it all on, it's going to burn before you even get a crust. Here we have our fermentation corner. Here is where all my ferment all my koji stuff in my storeroom. And here is a mushroom miso. It's actually uh, mushrooms koji and we actually ferment it for six months now. This is going to risotto later as well. So, so why I make my own tofu? I think ultimately people can taste things that are made from scratch. And uh, ultimately with that control comes flavour. It's very simple but each item goes through a ridiculous amount of preparation to make it good. So this is my to-do list. As you can see, it's very organised, very neat. Um, so basically all, my, all the main things I need to do are all written here. Every mixtape is uh, created lovingly from scratch. I think ultimately people can taste things that are made from scratch. Which is why they always say grandmother food tastes the best because they don't cut corners. There's, there's, it's a no compromise kind of cooking. So when we move in here, this place was designed to host people. We uh, got a place in uh, Tanglin Hall. So we were there for two years. After two years, then we moved in here. And that rental place actually helped us to decide how we're going to set up this place. We actually knocked one room down for dining. So before the guests come in, we want to set, uh, set up the music. We just want to ensure that the mood is right and create the right vibe for the place. That so goes into this playlist is carefully chosen because of the beat. Here, this is the epitome of bread and butter. So we got homemade koji bread with homemade culture butter on the homemade chopping board that I chopped in Japan. Um, yeah, everything on this board is homemade. So our kitchen is sort of a, sort of like a modern professional look. The whole kitchen is actually stainless steel. Um, the reason why you choose stainless steel is because we have a lot of hot pots, right? The last thing you want running around is to you want to find a trivet to put the hot pot so the hot pot can just go on a stainless steel straight away, no problem. And also it's a great material for me to make bread, for make pastries directly on it. It's relatively cool. Um, and most of all, it's easy to clean. It's the reason why restaurants around the world use stainless steel because it's durable, it's easy to clean. Um, yeah. I think the, the thing about char siu is all about the crust. It's all about that skin of, of melted and caramelized sugar. So the more layers you put on, the thicker the crust is. I think that's the key difference between homemade and, and, and outside, right? Outside, if you're making 100 char siu, there's no way that you can sort of apply three glaze because you know, you gotta pull it out and apply. But at home, I mean, you still have to time, apply the time and sort of give it the care it needs. I mean, you can put five even, but. Um, but I think three is more than plenty already. So during the circuit breaker period, Kenneth was doing char seals as uh, for takeaway, and uh, he made so much char siu, it was like I think our record was more than eighteen sets of char siu that he had to do, and he was just punching out char siu, and the whole kitchen was just like smelled like char siu for a while. It smelled fine. But if you had to smell char siu for two days straight, not just in the kitchen, but everywhere in the house, it's very traumatizing. And therefore, Kenneth has promised not to do takeaways for char siu anymore. 
So now it's only for dining, so just one small batch and that's it. But you can see even how a small batch has the amount of smoke there is. So, so imagine 18 sets. Yeah. We have so many people who come to dine with us after following our social media for three years. We're not like a restaurant. They need to plan ahead of time to come. As I think we've been very blessed so far. Our customers have been really nice. Um, they come here, you know, uh, it's like going to someone's house when, when you know, you, you, treat, you treat them with respect. So I think we've been, we've been really blessed with them. I think the, the whole, ultimately we are in Singapore, this whole Asian culture as well. Mm. I think in Asian culture, they, we, we tend to respect the home a lot. It's going to be very hard for the restaurant to keep up with the kind of time that they need to produce a menu like this. Which is what private dining is all about. It's about coming to someone's home and someone who has the time and the attention to give to the menu. It's ultimately home cooking. We can spend a lot more time with the restaurant. We only have one group for dinner. It's like per night, per day, we only have one group to serve. We want the whole experience to be more than just food. We want to connect with people. We hope that they will leave as friends rather than just customers. Thank you, bye guys. Thank you, bye guys. Have a good night. Bye. 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 <laughs> it's a wrap. So to clean up the place, uh, for every dinner we have, we have at least three loads of dishwasher. Right, so I think as of now, we've already put in first load. The second load will be this and the third load will be tomorrow morning when we put the glasses in. So as of now, to when the guests leave, usually depending on how much I can get stuff done, probably another two hours before we can go to bed. Yeah. So at the end of the night, we hope that dining at Mixtape Chef would be one of our guests' best unforgettable food memories.